Hi everyone, welcome to this 3D slicer tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to clean up a upload a scan and clean up a scan, isolate the ribs, vertebrae, and sternum from the scan. Alright, let's get started. Let's talk about how to download 3D Slicer. So I'm just going to go to Google right here and look up 3D Slicer. And this is what pops up. So I'm going to click on the first one, 3D Slicer. And it takes me to this website. Now I'm going to go to download. Once I've clicked on download, I'm going to scroll down. And here you can see you have a stable release and a nightly build. You have a Windows, Mac, OS X, and a Linux version. So download it for whichever operating system you have. And always go with the stable release because the nightly build means that they're constantly changing things. So I have a Mac, so I would do a stable release Mac. And I'm just going to save that file, and I already have it, so we're just going to go right into it. So then once I've saved it, I'm going to pull it up, and that's what the icon looks like. And it's going to open up this blank page. And this is the welcome page. And this is where all magic happens. Once you upload your files, you're able to work on it. And you'll always have this that screen to the left-hand side. And then you always have the parts that are filled in black right now will be covered with your scans that you're working on. And you can choose to work in all views or some views. I prefer working in the axial view. It's just easier for me to see, but it does offer axial, sagittal, and coronal. Okay, so now I'm going to load a file. I'm going to go to that left-hand side, right under Welcome. It says Load DICOM Data, and I'm going to click on that. And when I do that, this pops up. So the first time you do it, this is going to be completely blank, but because I've uploaded many files, it already shows in this file direct directory. So then I would go to import, and then I would import the file from whatever it is, and it, that's just the basic scan file. And you always want to click add link. And the reason it shows zero on all those numbers is because I've already had, I've already uploaded this once, so there's no new files that are being uploaded, but those numbers will change if it's the very first time. So just click OK. And now you have that file and all of the files under it, all of the different scans that were under it. So we're just going to go through each scan and determine which one's a good scan and which one's a bad scan. And I'll show you how to do that right here. So usually the first three and the last three are bad. I'll show you what a bad scan looks like. That's what a bad scan looks like. It's extremely fuzzy and you can't tell what's what in that scan. When, click a new, when you want to upload a new file, don't go back to data and choose new files because it'll take you to a folder inside your folder that has all of these individual scans. So you always want to go to the DICOM the very first time before you've cleaned up the scan. And always remember to keep a note of which ones you're doing so you don't get lost. So it's loading. We're going to try it again. Not really sure what happened. Just go. We're going to load six and there's an error there. So, so anytime you see that, always cancel out of it. Don't, do not open it because it will shut down your program. So you can just see that I'm clicking and moving my mouse up or down to change the color contrast so I can see the bones and going through the scan. I can see everything. Nothing looks too blurry, so this looks like a good scan. I'm going to use it. So the next part in the scan is thresholding it, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. So I'm going to go to the editor tool, and that's that pen tool in that top bar, or I can even go to the search bar and look up editor. Once that happens, just click OK, and you have a list of tools that pops up on the left. Scroll down a little bit, and the thresholding tool is the fourth from the right, and I'm going to click on that, and you're going to see almost like uh, a green screen fade in and out, and this just shows what's going to pop up on your 3D model. So clearly this is too much. So now I'm going to scroll down and try to adjust the threshold boundaries and always keep a note of whatever number you end up using because it might be useful in the future if you ever need to go back to the original scan. So I just want to adjust those two numbers to make sure I don't have too much extraneous matter and then adjust what I need. 
I'm going to click apply and I'm going to search model maker. Now once I search model maker, scroll down to where it says input volume, I'm going to select that and when I select that the scan number and volume axial one label or whatever plane you are working in will pop up. Just click that whatever it is. Then scroll down to models, click create new model hierarchy and apply this. And it does take a minute the very first time you're doing it. And so there you have your scan on the right and you can see that there is some extraneous matter that we're going to have to clean up that board in the back, the shoulder bones, arm bones. But for the most part, majority of the scan looks good. It looks like this was a complete scan, so we're going to have to take out the pelvis also and some of those vertebrae. So now I'm just going to show you how to clean that up. You're going to want to go to that same editor tool. Go to that same editor tool, and you're going to have to select the pen tool first and then the eraser tool to erase. Or if you simply want a pen tool, then just the pen tool. So you're going to click the third from the left on the top bar and the second from the left on that top bar. And now you have your eraser selected. So I'm just going to show you what a little bit looks like for time's sake. So I'm going to try to get rid of part of that green board on the back. So I'm just going to go down there and track it through each slice. You can see that as I erase it. It's going away, but it's not going to pop up on the 3D model until I create a new model. So then when I'm done with that little bit, I'm going to, again, go to Model Maker, create a new model. And now I can also hit this green icon at the top to take me to my new models. Or I can even type in models in the search bar. And when I do that, I'm going to click the eye of the one right above the model I'm working on to see what I've done. So there you can see that. Let me drag that down. So when I click that, there you can see that's all I've done. It looks like I missed a few slices, but I can always go back. And cleaning up the scan does take a lot of time, but it's better to get it right this one time. So when you have to go through and do the ribs, the vertebrae and the sternum, you don't have to keep repeating it. So that's what a scan looks like. And now I'm going to show you, to time's sake, let me just show you what a scan, a completed cleanup scan looks like. So that's what it looks like. Now, each scan should have 12 ribs on the left side, 12 on the right. You should have 12 thoracic vertebrae and a sternum. However, we are dealing with pre-op scoliosis patients, so they may not. As in this case, this patient only has 11 ribs on one side, and some of the ribs are fused. So now we're going to isolate a single rib, and you're going to make a copy of the scan file for each rib. Now, the way we're going to do this, we're going to go look through the scan. Now you can either start at the, you can either start at rib T1 or T12. I like to start from the bottom. It's easier to see. And left or right side, it doesn't matter what side you start on as long as you clearly label it. So we're going to isolate a rib and you can see the rib starting to appear on the right and left hand side. They kind of form a sideways arc. And we're just going to track one rib. And when, once I identify where it ends and where it begins, I'm going to delete everything above it and everything below it. And I can do that by going back to that editor tool and increasing the eraser size. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go and isolate just that rib on each slice. So I go to that. Now I'm just going to delete the right side and the left side and everything that's not that one rib. And this does take some practice, but it does go fairly quickly. Just make sure I haven't missed anything going through that scan. And I'm going to create a new model. And you can also change the color contrast. I like to keep it in black. It's just easier for me to see if there's any extraneous matter I need to delete. But then create a new model, model maker, click that, and that's what the ribs are going to look like. And of course some are going to be more curved, some are going to be longer, but that's just the general idea and I can always go back and smooth this out a little bit. But for the most part it looks pretty good. 
So now we're going to talk about how to isolate the sternum. I believe the sternum is the easiest part, and now let's run through what that is real quick. So you're going to go to the slicer, and you're just going to look at that 3D image, and the sternum is going to be different for everyone, but it's going to be in generally the same place. And you can see that that's that sternum is protruding from the front side. So we're just going to go through our slices, and the sternum is going to almost appear like a dot at the very top of the axilla view, and that's where it's going to pop up. It's just going to start there, and it's almost go it's going to get bigger and then disappear, and then start again small and bigger, and that's just the different bones in the sternum that are appearing, but you want to make sure you get all of them. So I'm going to follow that same technique of deleting everything above and below that sternum, and then I'm going to delete everything else besides the sternum, and then once it's done, I'm going to create a new model and look at it, and I can then see that there's a sternum, and I can always go back and clean it up a little bit, but this is the general idea of what it looks like, and again, it this does go fairly quickly. Now we're going to talk about how to isolate the vertebrae, which I think is the hardest part. But the thing with the vertebrae is that many of them might be few, so you just leave it as one column, but try to separate as much as you can. So, so always start with the bottom most vertebrae, and this is the one where the last ribs attach to, so you can see it's that one, and you're going to delete everything below that rib and everything above that rib, but you want to leave some wiggle room so that you don't delete too much. And you want to make sure that you include the vertebral body and the spinous process. And in doing that, you just want to delete everything, and I take it in steps, leave the ribs there, and everything looks good there, so now I'm just going to work my way down. And you can track where the vertebral where the vertebral bodies separate into two different ones on your axial view and where your spinous process separates. Also, you just want to get rid of the ribs and kind of work down into that. And for time's sake, because those do take a very long time, but it's just more of the same here, you just have to have a high attention to detail. I'll just take you to the end of it. So this is what one vertebrae is going to look like and of course you can always go back and smoothen it out and just make sure that you clear up all of the scan because sometimes there might be extraneous matter in the far right far left corner that's not directly impacting the scan but for the MATLAB code or any code that you're running with it it will now we've finally done that we've done 12 vertebrae, 24 ribs, isolated the sternum. Now uh, let's talk about saving. You're going to go to that top left save icon, click that. You're going The first time you're going to unclick that gift box where nothing's selected and then choose whichever file directory you want it in. So for myself, I'm saving into a folder. And then you can click save. I've already done that. And then there's another type of file you want. You want an STL file also. So you're going to click that box, scroll to the very bottom, and the second from bottom, you're going to make sure that's the only one selected. Go to that drop down menu, select STL, change your directory if you want to, and then you're going to save it. So that was a brief but long interview to 3D Slicer, and good luck. If you have any questions, just feel free to email me.